All right, so we can do all this fancy math and that is absolutely fantastic, but that's not good for anything if we can't actually save the results of our computations, right? So we actually have to have a way of putting values into variables and that's where variable assignment comes in. This is uh, F3.6 in the textbook, how we assign a value to an existing variable. We talked about setting an initial value for a variable using that equal sign initial value kind of syntax. But once we already have a variable, if we need to modify the contents or update them or clear them out, replace them with something else, whatever, uh, how do we actually assign a value to an existing variable? It's super easy. Uh, because we can use the same assignment operator that we were using to assign a value to a property. For example, label area.text equals the string containing blah. We're assigning the value blah to the text property of label area. Well, in a very similar fashion, we can actually use the equal sign to assign values to existing variables. And it will overwrite the variable's pre-existing value. So the value that was in there gets thrown out unless we saved it somewhere else. And we put the new value that we want to keep inside of that variable. But it's an assignment of a value to a thing. So we're using the exact same assignment operator to, that we use to assign values to properties of our controls. In fact, the funny thing is, is that Properties of controls are kind of variables in and of themselves. And I'll kind of touch on that a little more as we go along, but really it's all the same thing. You're doing the same thing, whether you're assigning a value to a property or assigning a value to a variable that is already existing, no difference whatsoever. It's super easy to assign a variable, a new value. All we have to do is type the variable's name and you say equals, and then you do some kind of expression. So maybe that expression is a hard coded value like the string containing blah or 4.3 or whatever, or maybe it's an expression that evaluates to a value. So like a mathematical expression or something like that. Um, that is essentially what you do. You, you put in some expression that can be evaluated into a value, uh, including a value itself, technically counts as an expression that evaluates to itself. And you put that inside of the variable, you chuck out all the old stuff and you cram your new value that you evaluated from the expression into all the shelves in the storage area and you've assigned a new value to a variable. Now it's important that the variable and expression have the same type. Um, for reasons that we'll talk about in just a second, but they should have the same type. If you know that you're going to use a variable with a specific data type because of the result of a specific calculation, then you should anticipate that and use the correct type for that variable. For example, when we're calculating the area of a circle based on a radius, uh, we are using a double in that multiplication. So even if the user gives us an integer, which actually they're not giving us, they're giving us a number, but we'll probably be converting that to a double anyway. So that that's less important, but because we're working with pi, especially this is a double that we're using with. So we should be anticipating that, Hey, the variable that holds this should be a double. So yeah, they should have the same type. Otherwise there might be some unexpected behavior that I'll get into in just a bit. The other important thing is that the variable should already be declared. Um, I mean, that's, we talked about that already by saying that a variable has to be declared before it's used. This is an example of using a variable. Um, if you try to set a variable that's not declared to a specific value, that we get from an expression, you still get the same problem where the you know Visual Basic won't recognize what that memory what memory address is supposed to be correlated with that name because it's never heard of that name before, so it will get upset. So make sure you're declaring your variables at the very top before you use them, before you're even assigning values to them. You know if you want to, like if you want to assign something as you're declaring it 
you have the tools to do that using the equal sign initial value um, syntax that we talked about in declaring variables. But by the time you're assigning it, you should have already declared it. So important to know. Here are some examples of variable assignment. Uh, you can see that the variable types indicated by the IDs at the very front are the same as the um, types of the expression on the other side, especially here with you know double new pay. We know that this variable double current pay is a double, and we are also multiplying it by a double, so we can be reasonably sure that we get a double out of it. Now, the fifth example, uh, decimal rate equals 0.03d. This is a fun one because if I just typed 0.03, Visual Basic would assume that I'm typing out a double. It automatically interprets most decimal points numbers as doubles, or at least it tries to interpret them as doubles. However, if you put an uppercase letter D after, directly after the letter, or the, uh, the number, like so, 0.03D, that signals to Visual Basic that I mean the decimal 0.03, not the double 0.03. Specifying the type decimal using what's known as a literal type character. 0.03 is known as a literal, and in this case, it, you know, 0.03 by itself would be a double literal, just like 0.25 right here is a double literal, or 2023 is a um, integer literal. And we also have string literals like we've talked about before. The literal type character says, hey, this literal is a decimal type, not a double type. So we're, it's a way for us to write down a literal and specify the type of that literal so that Visual Basic doesn't confuse it for a double and then say, hey, why are you trying to assign a double uh, into a decimal variable? So that's important to remember. If you want to specify that a number is a decimal, type the uppercase D right after that number. And that's variable assignment. Uh, now we can actually store our computations in there super easily. Um, makes it really easy for us to store things like double area being the result of that pi r squared mathematical expression we saw in the last video. Of course, it's not the only way to put vari uh, values into variables. For example, we saw triparse, where we put a value into double radius by passing double radius in as an argument to the method. Uh, that's a whole other thing. Some methods allow you to do that, where instead of like returning a value that you then use the variable assignment operator to put that value into a variable, it will instead uh, ask you to pass in the variable into the method itself, and then it does that work for you. So uh, when it comes to methods like that, you'll have to double check and see, okay, what's um, going on here. But that, you know, when you're not worrying about all that kind of stuff, variable assignment using the equality or using the equals operator is super cool and very helpful and saves you, um, you know, a lot of time and resources and all that kind of stuff.